Welcome to Maximize Potential, the podcast to educate and motivate through a range of original interviews designed to help you maximize your potential. Hello and welcome back to episode 10 of our podcast. And as you'll remember, I made an announcement a couple of episodes ago that uh, we were going to be featuring record-breaking polar explorer, Pen Haddo. And I'm very pleased to announce that I've got the first snippet of the interviews that we've done with Pen available on the podcast today. Now, it's a little bit different. Um, As you know, normally we'll actually interview someone and tell a full story, which is exactly what we've got coming up over Penn. But he touched on a subject that was so pertinent to everything that we stand for within the podcast, and also so relevant to a lot of the issues that people face, not just in business, but in their career, in their life in general, that we just took an extract of it and put it together for you on this podcast. And the subject matter is how Penn Haddo has learnt to train himself to deal with failure because this man probably more than most has had to learn how to deal with failure because his road to becoming the record breaking explorer that he's now known for has not been a simple path and he's dealt with failure time and time again anyway i could go on and on about it but i just want you to listen to it and uh, hopefully you'll get as much out of it as i actually did so please enjoy I'm, I'm really interested in this concept of failure and the difference between a setback, temporary one, and what you might call absolute failure. Mm. No one, including me, likes to fail. It involves all sorts of things that are not nice. You don't feel good about yourself. You don't think your, your, the, your friends and family and your peers, colleagues, um, uh, look at, uh, take a dim view of you for having failed. It's just a very negative experience, isn't it? Yes, that is part of the story. But the other part of the story is if you can just realize that it's not a failure, it is an opportunity in a very real and full, complete way. It's an opportunity. It is a window on how to solve the problem that is blocking you from getting to where you want to be. How, how brilliant is that? It's showing you the way. If you just sit down calmly with a few friends or experts or just on the back of an envelope in the pub and think, actually, what, what actually went wrong there? Break it down. It might be one thing. It might be 10 things. It might be some big things and some small things or one small thing or one big thing. Identify them all. And once you've done that, you sort of crack the problem, well, you're halfway to cracking it, because all you've got now got to do is then address, is it because I need to get fitter? Is it because I need to um, have a lighter, a different shape's front to the sledge, in my case, in, in a sort of business sense? Is it because I need to um, get more familiar with how to operate the laptop when I'm doing a, a PowerPoint presentation to a sales meeting? Or really need to, and rather than just, oh, all I know is how to push three buttons. If that doesn't work, it'll get embarrassing because I get in a tangle. You know, work it out. What went wrong? It's fantastic. It's revelatory. It is. It, it's what you need. And most people don't see it as a failure, and they think I'm not even going to take that on because I may fail, and that's a bad experience. I've had those things experienced before, and it's not pleasant. Well, who wants an unpleasant experience? I don't. If you can see it as um, an opportunity that may come, it may present itself. Have a go. And when you hit the boundary, and you will, and you absolutely, everyone has failures, big and small as they go along, even the most successful, inverted commas, people um, in their different fields. They all have failures, but it's how they deal with it. And they don't see it as failures, they see it as setbacks. Or you could be even more extreme, and I think it's entirely arguable, they're not even setbacks, they're opportunities. They're actually throwing open the, the, the windows, and the light comes pouring in as to how You can solve it and break down the barrier and move through it. And the great thing is, if you are brave enough, or really just intelligent enough, just intelligent enough to see that for that for what it is, then you will a go very comfortably up into it, into those situations, 
and then move through them. And that's when you start leaving people behind because most people won't. They think it's a failure. They don't like the feeling. They don't see it for what it is. When it happens, they stop. Whereas you can just keep opening these, you just keep throwing out it. Another note, it's like going down a passageway and there are loads and loads of doors and it's just about pushing open the doors and pushing open the doors and just keep going. And uh, that is one of the great tricks of life, it seems to me, if, you, if you're someone who wants to fulfill your potential, maximise your potential. So there you go. That's our first little treat for the forthcoming interviews with Penn Haddo. And I'm sure you'll agree with me in saying that was a very refreshing and positive approach to dealing with failure, or as Penn would call it, a temporary setback. Give you an idea of what's coming up with Penn, we've got three interviews in total. And uh, the first one is actually going to deal with Penn Haddo as he grew up and what steered him into a career of exploring and adventuring. The second interview is going to actually focus on the successful solo attempt that Penn did when he did manage to become the first person to ever reach the pole solo, unsupported and without resupply. And in the final one of the three is going to focus on what he learned from the whole experience, how it changed him, how it changed his mental approach to life and how he sort of views everything now that he's come back to normality, as it were. Anyway, I hope that was a, a great introduction to, to what we're going to be sharing with you over the coming weeks. And as always, we always like to leave you with a music track from uh, our good friend Xerxes. And this one is going to be from his Volume 2 album and it's called Diamond Shrine.